Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you one script out of two scripts. It's going to be two videos, um, and this script is going to get the Revit link data um, for automatically linking uh, models into one another, and um, we're going to be working with the Forge API. I'm not going to get too much into like REST APIs and, and all of that and how that works and the difference between headers and parameters and, and URLs and everything. Uh, I'll leave that up to you to just go out and read the documentation. There's a lot out there and then also there's some fantastic resources on LinkedIn Learning. Um, if I remember... Uh, I'll link them down below, but feel free to remind me if if um, if you uh, um, don't see them there. So, anyways, um, this workflow started because well, we, we're trying to automate all the the new the the really redundant um, stuff of trying to create uh, uh, projects, and one of that is linking models in automatically and. Um, this blog from uh, Luke Johnson, I found this while trying to figure out how do I do this. Um, I found this blog and it talks about this workflow. Uh, now, his workflow didn't work for us because it required you to um, get out there on, uh, on BIM 360, create a master file. Um, and this works really well if you have hundreds of files. So you're on a master file, you, you know, you have a master file, you have hundreds of, of links. Well, then you just link it into one master file and then um, you run the other script on all the other, you know, hundred other files. Uh, but the initial master file and you run the first script, it pulls out all the linked data. Um, so it needs to know like the forge ID, the project ID. It needs to know, um, I think it's the, the four, it's like a... Um, uh, a forge like model ID and so it needs to know all this stuff to actually create a um, a BIM 360 like link in, in a Revit model and so this workflow does you know force you to manually have to do that and so I was like okay well we, you know there's all this is the data we need we need these four things how do I get that <laughs> um, and so w working with the forge API you can get all the data um, and then all the other data you can just get from the model itself. And so if you want to check out this blog and read, you know, read about uh, this workflow, um, you'll find it below. Actually, you'll find it below in a OneDrive link. I just created a shortcut there, but I'll try to add it to this description if I remember. Um, but check it out. It's, it's a good read and there's, uh, he shares the scripts as well. Also, I want to mention, and I'll show you the, the folder real quick, um, there's the uh, uh, DynaWebs uh, uh, files, and if we click on that, you'll see that there's a bunch of resources. I started with this, because um, I wasn't sure how to interact with uh, Forge with the nodes, but I started playing around with it, and like you can see here, there's a Forge request token one. So I opened up these, I checked them out, and I started with those scripts to build this script. So um, check out DynaWeb stuff, some really, really cool, cool scripts in there. Um, and... Uh, if you want to check out the Dyna Web Creator, uh, this is his LinkedIn profile, so check that out. Uh, these placeholder, placeholder links, you'll find them in the, the uh, project, uh, or in, this, in the OneDrive folder as well. And you'll also find the actual BIM 360 models that we're going to be working with. So I'll download those, put them in here, and then you can upload them onto your own BIM 360 account, and you're good to go. Um, I do want to say, um, as a... As a really important step to all of this, you need to have access to create apps and to add apps to your, your BIM 360 account. Now, you don't have to be an account admin, um, but it, you'll need to have an account admin add your app. You know, if you're working for a firm and you, cr you created a Forge app, well, you'll need somebody to take that app and add it um, to your BIM 360 account. Um, so... Um, just a heads up for that. This will not work if you do not have an app created up there. There's some awesome, if you are an account admin, there's some awesome documentation out on Autodesk that will explain how to create a Forge app. Um, it's really easy to do. And um, 
and the reason why you need to do that is because it needs to tell us, hey, we, we can use that data. We're allowed to use that data. And then when you create that app, there's two things that are created. It's the client ID and the client secret. You'll need to update these after you add your app. Um, again, I'm going to go through this real quick. I'm not going to touch on like everything that's involved with this. Um, when you get used, like REST APIs, after you start messing around with some of this stuff, um, it's pretty easy. It's, uh, you know, it's not too different from uh, each request. Like this is a post request that gets the authentication that allows us to interact with or allows us to do the rest of what we're trying to do, which is just get the data. And you can see here, uh, there's a scope that says, hey, we're allowed to read, we're allowed to uh, read the data, read a bucket. And so, um, that's pretty much what this is doing, but this isn't like in credit, like this isn't totally different from, uh, these get requests, which in this case is, uh, we're getting the projects. So it's a lot of the same stuff. Um, but you know, definitely check out the, the documentation for each of these request types. You can see this is authentication. I have the link to the documentation so that you can read it. So check those out. So this gets us our, um, our authentication that says hey you're allowed to do other things uh, and then this one's gonna get up get us our projects um, another thing I want to point out is here you'll see that I have list of repeated and you see that we have 17 of these um, the reason why is because um, I know that there's 1400 uh, projects on in the in, in my BIM 360 so you're just maybe different also uh, if you use python you can just loop through and make the request and, and if you get nothing back you end uh the loop uh in this case this is just a cheap uh cheap and fast way to do it um i i knew how i know how to do it in python 3 i haven't messed with it in dynamo to actually do this so this was just a lot quicker uh, but you'll see here there's a range from 0 to 1700 uh, the reason why that's there is because you're only allowed uh, to get a hundred projects back in each request so we have to make 17 requests to get all 1700 projects in this case we only have about I think 1500 1400 something uh, projects so uh, we make the request 17 times and then uh, each of those requests are getting back a hundred prog uh, hundred projects in each response and then um, you can see over here that we've get we have um, a whole bunch of projects and actually this is a list of like you can almost call them like dictionaries of uh, just projects and their properties. Um, so in each of these lists, in each of these um, 15 lists, there are um, 100 projects and all the project properties that are associated with those. The only thing we really care about is figuring out which one of those 100 projects is the one that we're actually working on currently. Um, now this is kind of weird, but I couldn't figure out how to find the forge because there's a there's a there's an ID there's a project ID up on forge for this specific BIM 360 model, but I couldn't find a way to figure that out within within the Revit model. I couldn't figure out if that information stored there, so I had to work with the API. No project can be called the same thing. So no project on BIM 360 can be called the same thing. So I was able to use that as like an ID. So I use the, the BIM 360 name or the project name, or sorry, the project path. And then that gave me the project, the BIM 360 project name. And I use that to figure out the project uh, ID value. So um, all of this is just filtering and figuring that out essentially. So you can see here I get the, the reference, external reference types, I get the current document, and then I'm just trying to figure out um, again like which which one of those 1500 projects is the uh, BIM 360 project we're looking at currently. Um, and again if you ever go out, if you, if you never created yeah, if you created BIM 360 projects before, you'll know that um, when you try to put in the same name, it says, hey, this already exists. So that's a, you can use those as, as almost project IDs to figure out the actual project ID value. Uh, this next one, um, so what, we, what we're after now is actually getting the, uh, the 
the element ID. And this is really annoying to have to do this um, because you have to, you can't just, um, uh, you know, just say, hey, I just want this file. You got to figure out what folder that file is in. And it starts off with the top folders. And the top folders is the project files. And then we do the exact same request, uh, the exact same git request for um, the, uh, the, f the, um, the files within those files um, so this one uh, so so this one's going to return the folder IDs of, of the uh, the top folder so this return the the first one over here this returns the top folder and we have that the ID for that folder for the project files and this is going to return all the folders within uh, that folder <laughs> and then um, we need to figure out which which file we're in so we're in the MEP model right now and the way that we name the uh, files on BIM 360 is Arch MEP structural now be may be different for you so you may need to to update uh, this script to reflect that uh, but simply uh, for this one Arch MEP structural and this is the MEP model so we say true um, and what this is looking at here is the the folders on BIM 360 and so we have Arch MEP structural it's just matching it trying to figure out which which file are we looking at currently like which model we have open and then which folder is this probably going to be in and that's you know it's just matching it up and then from there that gives us our ID value for that folder that's what this dictionary does here and then um, we pass that in into this one because now we have the folder so now we need to get the contents of that folder and this is going to give us all the way at the end this is going to actually give us our model uh, ID value and you can see here forge item ID um, and then we have our project ID we have our forge project uh, ID and we have our linked model ID it, uh, excuse me and this is what um, what we need uh, uh, for this <laughs> this is just parts of what everything is like part of everything that's needed for the actual link the other parts is the uh, project name so what that this files name is the uh, path uh, for the file and then this value is actually irrelevant I don't even think we need an input for this um, and I can't even remember I think this is a version value like a version number which for like these don't have version I mean these are live models we're linking so they don't have version numbers um, so to keep it simple I just put a, um, a list there with um, an empty string and then up here is the server ID um, and then you can see here this might be different uh, for Europe offices okay so uh, and then all of that, we take all of that data and then we pass it into our Python script over here. And this Python script is going to simply write this data to your um, to your documents folder. And uh, if it if it exists, if the data exists, what it does is it appends the information uh, to uh, to the file. So it appends the the model data. But if it's the first time writing it, in which the, in this case uh, is the first time I ran it, um, it, it actually creates um, the header, which is uh, project name, and then model data depends that. And what that looks like is this. Project name, model data, we have our links here, and then we have this here. And, you know, what we do from here is we run this on each of the models. So in this case, we have three models running on each of them. Okay, and then... Um, and then we'll have three links, uh, and then we run the final script on all three of the models again, and then they're, they're linked, and we're done. So I'm going to um, close this. I'm going to say uh, don't save. I'm going to close that. Uh, and so in the next video what we're going to look at is actually linking this in I'm going to run this script on the other two models I'm not going to bore you with that but essentially I'm just going to open them run this close them open them run this close them uh, the idea uh, for this script you know to actually be efficient uh, is to um,
is to automatically have it ran, you know, run uh, on some type of auto automatic system, like maybe Imagine It Clarity, and I'm sure there's other options as well. Imagine It Clarity is really, really slick. You can um, um, just set up Dynamo Task and automatically run them. Um, so that's how we do it. But you could probably use tools like uh, like Microsoft Flow um, to automatically, um, uh, you know. Uh, just to do the picks and clicks to automatically uh, link or run these scripts on each model. So there may be a variety of ways to do this. And um, so, you know, feel free to make this script custom in however way you want. Um, again, you'll find it uh, below. There's a OneDrive link to all the files that I share. Uh, just find the, uh, the, the latest folder. Um, or if this is in the future, just find the folder with the name uh, that matches somewhat like the video. If it's, you know, it should say Dynamo Links Automatic or something like that. So anyways, check that out. Let me know if you have any questions or any problems. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.